We are all born deaf, a man told me, growing our hearing involuntarily the longer we breathe. Some manage to avoid the loudness, somehow hiding it from consciousness, but it still spreads like a violent mold through floorboards. It can suffocate a house. He said it presses down like the ocean on a trench, so everyone's ears bleed eventually. He felt his first trickle when he tried to count his own sins and an honest account of the last three days took him eight hours and he still knows he missed some. Was it trying to count my own sins or a class about Vietnam or the civil rights movement or Watergate or 2AM porn or Jeffrey Dahmer or Rwanda when I changed the channel from the Feed the World infomercial because I just couldn't take those little kids anymore. It made me hear it first. The loudness, the humanity of our own existence, of our own sheer weight, the impossible heaviness of the equation, all of my sins piling up unimaginably long times the sins of 6.8 billion people and all the people before, after. There's no hope in self-repair, no great process of spiritual evolution, no chrome future full of billboard brighter tomorrows. Not because there was a holocaust, but because before the echo of never again had died, before the ashes had even settled, the Soviet Union was already placing prisoners in NKVD special camps housed at Buchenwald and Sachsenhausen because I've sinned arrogantly, violently repented, been washed clean undeservedly by the blood of Jesus Christ and then gone right back, right back to those same sins, blocking out the distance they put me from God, the fate I've been saved from, the suffering I cause. As if it's all just a pop song on the radio, and my man-made GPS can navigate the cosmos better than the one who made it. In a bookstore, thumbing through poetry like a pharmacist, silently praying, I'll never reach the age where the strength to twist the child lock fails me. I met the man again, returning volumes of Whitman and Thoreau, Dickinson and Hemingway, and the cartons of neon earplugs he'd bought in search of peace. He said, silence! Comes in listening in surrender to the quiet but persistent melody playing impossibly through the loudness, the heaviness that brought him to his knees where he could hear the gift of grace. <laughs>